Accountancy, as it is, is a very charity course. Mahirap ang accountancy. Mahirap ang maging accountant. The profession maintains the highest mortality rate among courses that require board examination. Sa lahat ng ito, accountancy majors all over the Philippines are known for their hard work, perseverance, and resilience. But even the toughest will break and the sturdiest will fall. Ang pagbabagong dulot ng panahon, may dilang iba't ibang hamon ngayon. Physical learning is already difficult in the first place. But what makes learning this year more difficult is that it will be conducted through our technology because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is very hard to continue studying during this uncertainty, especially when you have little or no resources to attend your classes safely. As students struggle, need to move forward, Amidst the challenges presented by distance learning, we at NFJP not on our kind hearts to help us support our future accounting professionals. Ila launch po namin sa Nobyembre ang project padayon na may layuning magbigay ng laptops, prepaid Wi-Fi at accounting books sa mga nangangailangang JPMs. Tayo po ay magtulungan para walang isuchante ang maiwan at sa bay-sabay. Kita ay magkapadayo. Project Padayo. A donation drive for the continued learning of accounting students. It's a beautiful day today here in Isabella province where I came from and I hope you are all doing well in despite having a cozy or I hope that you are all doing well in this cozy and wonderful day in the comfort of your homes. It's actually chilly weather right now kaya medyo hindi pa tayo nagiinit pero I hope on the course of these lecture series talaga namang mas magiging interesado tayo so ayan we recommend that you have a cup of coffee beside you kasi nga medyo malamig ngayong panahon because today's another wonderful um wonderful learning experience and of course we have the best or one of the best speakers uh, in this industry ayan so JPNs from all over the country Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao make your presence felt by commenting your region and your message of course kung ano mang nasa isip nyo ngayon i-comment nyo yan of course together with your region para malaman namin na sinasanamahan nyo kami ayan so we will be reading that later as i feel or as we go on on our roll call ayan so kanina kanina we already have we already presented you the project padayon all right, right. So we already presented you our project Padayon. So NFJP is really glad to up, to give you some update on that particular project, right? So NFJP is almost done in the distribution of the first batch of beneficiaries in the different regions in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And we couldn't wait to share those stories that actually inspired us and assure you that will inspire you once you see them. Ayan. On this success of the first batch, we are already working on the batch too, ladies and gentlemen, and in between. We are already working on the second batch of this Project Padayon, a donation drive for the continued learning of these accounting students. So we will be helping more underprivileged students to give them laptops, to give them prepaid Wi-Fi, to give them accounting books, because we believe that um, by giving them by giving them these particular materials for their education we will be they will be realizing their goal to be soon as cpas ayan so of course yeah so we really we really hope that you will be able to help us and um and i think we have a poster here please show the poster Baby, 
All right, oh. Ayan, so we have the poster here of Project Padayan, right? So, all right, yeah. Project Padayan as a nation drive for the continued learning of accounting students. So we have given you here some of the bank accounts of the GNFJPA and of course GCash accounts full of one of our co-heads, which is Jane, Ina, and Daya. So you could always you could always download or you could always donate there in order for um in order for us to realize and help us on this on this cause. So if you have increased for your donations, you may contact me, your National Vice President for Communication of Northern Luzon. You can contact, of course, Jan, Des Jan Arwin Lucena of South Luzon, Elisha Palomar of Visayas, Jane and Diane of Mindanao, or you could email us. You can email us at our official email address, which is projectpadayon.nfgp at 2021 at gmail. Dot com. All right, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That will be our project, Padayan. So we really hope that you will be helping us on this cause as we reach for more students in need. So, all right, once again, good afternoon, JPNs from all over the Philippines. Mula Batanes hanggang hulo. We gladly welcome you to the very first installment of Kinaadman, a lecture on banking laws, AMLA, and taxation under the local government code. Ayan. So, syempre, bago tayo mag-proceed, ano, mag bago tayo mag-proceed sa ating, sa ating program, kagaya nga nang sinabi ko kanina, kailangan natin ng roll call. Ayan, i-comment nyo na yung mga region nyo. At dabasahin na natin yung inyong mga, yung inyong mga comments dyan. Ayan. So, we already have, alright, so then, let's start with region 1 and CAR. Of course, Ilocos region and CAR. Where are you? Ayan, I could see some people here. Ayan, Region 1 and CAR. Ayan, of course, they are um kaya established lang din ang federation nila and I could I could hear na talagang nag-establish na rin sila ng kanilang mga events and I um I know that they went successfully. So ayan, good luck sa inyo and I hope na sinasamahan niyo kami ngayon dito dito sa ating dito sa ating um, sinasama niyo kami dito sa ating um, lecture series on si Kina Adman. Alright? Alright, so yan. Let's proceed naman sa Region 2. Region 2. Oh, ayan, Region 2, Cagayan Valley. Ayan, nandyan ba kayo? Ayan, I could see some people here on the comment section. Ayan. Alright, Region 2. Alright, so kamusta naman kayo dyan? Ayan, nandito ako ngayon sa region to actually at medyo malamig-lamig yung weather. Kaya alam ko malamig din sa inyo yan. Kaya sabi ko nga, get a cup of coffee. Kasi mabilisan lang naman itong discussion natin today. Alright, so let's proceed to the happiest region, Central Luzon. Nandyan ba ang Central Luzon? Alright, Central Luzon, the happiest region, of course, being led by their very active president, Axel, of course. Alright, nandiyan sila, nandiyan sila. Nakikita ko kayo. Nakikita ko kayo dyan sa Region 3, Central Luzon. Alright, so let's proceed to Region 4. It's a one of the most active regions so when it comes to the activities. Especially on their participation. Talaga namang nararamdaman lagi namin ang kanilang participation. Region 4, kamusta naman kayo dyan? Alright, so sana we really hope that you are doing well. And of course, we really hope that you will be learning a lot here on this lecture series. Alright, so let's proceed to our Bicol region. Ayan, Bicol region. Nandyan ba ang Bicol region? Magparamdam naman ang mga taga Bicol region dyan. Region 5. Alright, wala pa ako masyado nakikita ng comment dito from region 5. But I'm sure na nandyan sila. Nahihiya lang sila siguro mag-comment. And of course, just an update guys. We already have 1,200 viewers on our Facebook page. Ayan, so nakikita naman talaga rin na napakaraming interesadong matuto on this lecture series. Of course, we are being, of course, being, being participated by different people, not just our students, of course, but of course, our speakers, really credible speakers from, of course, the Rayo, Rayo Review Center. Ayan, so moving on, let's proceed to Region 6. Region 6 from Western Visayas. Ayan. Nasaan ang Region 6? Ayan, nakik ngayon, po, ngayon ko pala nakikita yung Region 5, guys. Sorry, sorry. Ayan, so Region 6. Nasaan ang Region 6? Alright, nandyan ang Region 6. 
Of course, nandiyan si Lish. Ang isa sa ating mga pinaka-active na NEO, Lish. Kamusta naman ang Region 6 dyan? I hope that you are, you guys are all doing well. And of course, having fun on this lecture series. Ayan, move on tayo sa tahanan ng Chocolate Hills. Let's move on to Central Visayas. Ayan, kamusta ang Region 7? Alright, Region 7. Nandiyan ba ang Region 7? Of course, nandiyan sila yan. Kamusta kayo dyan? I hope you're doing well. Ayan, ngayon ko pa rin lang nakikita yung Region 6. Ayan. So, kamusta po kayo lahat? Ayan. Talagang makikita naman natin talagang very um, very eager matuto at very interesado matuto ang ating mga JPNs from all over the country on this lecture series. Especially napaka-crucial na mga topic natin like banking laws, AMLA, taxation under the local government code. Which is, hindi natin mostly makikita sa mga librong napapublish, right? So, that's why it's very helpful and we're really thankful for our speakers. Alright, let's proceed. Let's proceed to the home of the San Juanico Bridge. Ayan, yung mga landmark dyan. Sa Region 8, Eastern Visayas. Hello! Ayan, hello, Region 8. Ayan, nakikita ko si Arlene Canillas. Good afternoon, rainy afternoon everyone on Region 8. Good afternoon guys, I hope. Ayan, stay dry, stay dry. Ano, stay dry. Ayan, dandyan muna kayo sa mga bahay nyo. Sama-sama tayong matuto dito sa very fruitful afternoon with of course, um, with of course our co-JPNs from all over the country. Alright, let's move further. Parang natapos na to. Region 9, Zamboanga Peninsula. Kamusta kayo dyan? Nandyan ba kayo? Alright, I hope that you guys are here. Region 9, of course. Alright, let's move. Again, isa rin sa mga pinaka-active na region to. We have Region 10 and Caraga. Ayan. Hi, Kyle. I hope your your region is doing well. Kamusta naman ang region niya dyan? Ayan, nandyan po si Kyle, ang ating very active National Vice President for Academics. Ayan. Kung, kung may chance lang sana tayo pumunta niyan, they also have many white beaches. And of course, really good green islands. Ayan. So, ay, kamusta kayo dyan sa so region? Ten and Caraga. Alright. Nakikita ko rin nanonood sa atin. Together is their very active president. Hi, Bella. I hope your guys are doing there. Ayan. Sana magkita-kita tayo anytime soon. Now, let's proceed to also one of the most active region then. Ayan. Actually, lahat naman active. Pero ito lang talaga mga nakikita ko lagi-lagi. Of course, kasama na, kasi syempre din din yung region ng isa sa mga co head natin sa project pa dayon, which, which is Jane, we also have Jing, our audit. And of course, Raven, which joined us today, the Davao region. Kamusta kayo dyan? Alright, Davao region, region 11. Alright, kamusta kayo dyan? I hope you guys are doing well. Now, let's proceed to Sock Sergeant. Ayan, kamusta kayo dyan sa Sock Sergeant, region 12, magingay. Alright, I hope you guys are doing well. Sana magkita kita talaga tayo soon, anytime soon. Sama na matapos na itong pandemic na to At para maka-launch na tayo ng mga physical activities. Dito pa lang, di ba? Sa online presence pa lang, di ba? Ang dami na nating participants. And we're already reaching to 1,300 viewers just as the moment. And hindi pa tayo nag-start sa discussion. So we really hope na mas marami pa yung participants natin later. Ayan, Sock Sergeant, kamusta kayo dyan? I hope you guys are doing well. So ayan. Now, of course, Last, but definitely not the least, the National Capital Region. Ayan, the National Capital Region. Isa sa pinakamadaming region. Kamusta kayo dyan? Ayan, ayan. Sana maging safe kayo dyan lagi. Ayan, of course. Are your safety our topmost priority? Kaya magingat lang tayo. Pero of course, don't forget to have fun. Ayan naman. Let's, let's. Socially engaged, of course, to let's utilize and maximize the social media platforms that we have to communicate with our friends despite having this, of course, COVID that restricts the mobility of us going outside, right? So, ayan tapos ng ating roll call. JPNs, I hope na talagang nakatutok kayo dito sa ating, ano, sa ating Pinadman lecture series on banking laws, AMLA, taxation under the local government code. Ayan, I guess... Everyone is pumped up and ready to absorb this knowledge and from our very special speaker this afternoon. But of course, this event will not be possible without our sponsor, right? So we thank our sponsor for this afternoon, 
The Real Excellence Online CPA Review. Be empowered. Join the Raya Revolution. You can follow them at their official Facebook page, reyocpareview.ph, or you could always join them at their official Facebook group, which we provided you on the link. You could always join them for, the, for you to have access on the exclusive webinars from the Review Center itself. Nakita nyo naman kanina kung gano ka, katataas yung level, mga top-notchers, mga kilala sa industry, yung kanilang pool of reviewers. Kaya naman masisiguro namin talagang credible lahat ng, um, lahat ng matututunan nyo dyan. Alright? Of course, before tayo mag-proceed, ano? Ayan, ma- ma- For us to have a smooth flow of program in this virtual platform, let's have some few reminders. To make your learning experience more fruitful, first, of course, let's respect each other. Ayan, like JPNs from all over the country, we know that we came from different parts of the Philippines and we share different values, we share different cultures, so we really recommend or we really encourage you guys to please respect each other. Ayan, para na mas, mas maganda at mas sound and smooth yung ating flow of discussion and interaction at the end of the day. And of course, raise your question on the comment section. Ayan, reminder that we are streaming exclusively on our Facebook page. That's why we really encourage you guys to raise your questions there. Kasi meron tayong committee dyan na nagbabantay ng mga questions nyo at ipo-forward sa atin mamaya para basahin at masagot ng ating speaker. Of course, make sure you have a pen and paper beside you. Kaya na, para naman matake down notes nyo lahat na mga ituturo natin today because you will always be using this. Especially kung third year man kayo, kung fourth year kayo at malapit na ang CPA board examinations which yun naman talaga ang pinag-prepare natin, right? So ayan, itake down note nyo to at magagamit na magagamit nito on the review stage. Ayan, syempre, ayan, keep up the good work guys. Ayan ko na nandito kayo to learn And we are really grateful for, for uh, we're really grateful at NFJP uh, to help on this learning experience. Ayan, let's wait. Let's not wait any further and get this program going. And this, let let this program going, right? Ayan, medyo na bubulo na ako kasi excited na rin ako. So to ask for guidance for the success of this two-day event, and of course, um, let's um for the success of this two-day event, let's have the invocation. For our Muslim brothers and sisters to be followed by the Christian prayer. All right. Um, I guess we are having some technical difficulty as of the moment. Let us rest assured that our technical committee is already fixing that. And let's just restart from our um, prayers for our Muslim brothers and sisters. Ayan. All right.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم آمين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هدينا سرات المستقيم سرات الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال آمين اللهم اجمع شامل المسلمين وكريستيان ولوما في مدينة دباو وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد جهل تنوهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing, that me, me in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. Alright, so without further ado, let's get straight to business. Alright, yan. Ayan, okay na, na. Let's, let's, let's get straight to business. And to formally welcome us to this momentous event, let us now welcome our very hardworking, our very patient, and of course, very pretty National Vice President for Academics, Ms. Kyle Nance Delgado. to deliver her opening remarks. Ayan. Hello. Um, am I audible ba, Daryl? Yes, Kyle. Ayan. Okay. So, sorry sa chickens. Yan muna. Okay. Hello there. Um, I want to ask you something first. Um, this question seems to be very familiar to Filipinos. Uh, Para kanino ka bumabangon? So ayan, I'll wait a few seconds for the participants to answer because we are here in FB Live and there might be a delay with live streaming. So uulitin ko yung tanong. Para kanino ka bumabangon? Ayan, baka may mga NEOs and standcoms din dyan na gustong mag-share ng kanilang sagot. So ayan ha, hintayin ko yung sagot nyo. <laughs> Sabi ni Jane dito, bumabangon daw siya para sa kanyang crush. Yung iba dito para kay mama, ang cute. Yan to si Arlene. And then si Peter para sa future. Eto si Jed, napaka-power naming MVP non-academics. Para daw sa NFJPA. Para sa pamilya. 
Ayan, ba? Diba? Napaka-heartwarming. Para sa pangarap. Ayan, napaka-heartwarming na mga sagot ng mga taong ito. I mean, as we further examine this line, para kanino ka bumabangon, we will realize that this talks about purpose. And later, you will know what this webinar's purpose truly is. So ayan, esteemed guests, national officers, our beloved advisors, to our highly admired speaker, and most importantly, to every accountancy student or graduate from all over the country, magandang hapon, maayong hapon to all of you. Okay, I would like to greet my chickens then. Ang dami nila, hindi sila, <laughs> hindi sila tumatahimik. So ayun, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. The National Federation of Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants strives to maximize its capacity as the national organization. With NFJPS platform, we intend to support the educational journey of future CPAs. As we aim to supplement the academic endeavors of, acad of accounting students, we bring to you Kina Adman. Kina Adman is a monthly webinar series in partnership with Real Excellence Online. You may ask, what does Kina Adman mean? Well, it is a Hiligaynon word, and in a literal sense, it signifies knowledge, wisdom, education, learning. NFJP decided to come up with Kina Adman as we want to shed knowledge and wisdom to our every constituent. Continuing to promote and advocate academic excellence despite these trying times, the program has not has been initiated has not been initiated only for acquiring academic knowledge it also strives to provide the accountancy students a wide array of people to look up to the webinar series perseveres to educate in a larger sense but is that really the only point of conducting a lecture per month so why why are we having these academic events if I were to give you a blunt answer, it would be, of course, because the accountancy students are eyeing for that CPA title and we are helping them achieve that through this lecture series. But let's go deeper than that. Why are these people striving so hard? Bakit nagsusunog ng mga kilay ang mga estudyante ito? Why are these people so hardworking? Why do these people choose coffee over sleep? Why do these people skip family time or friends time para lang mag-study? Why are these people glued to their seats every day and suki pa ng library when physical classes were still conducted? If I were to answer, it's not only for that CPA title. It's something that goes beyond the concrete and physical. Somewhere out there, Somewhere up there, a mother works day in and day out, hopeful that one day her son will be able to give them a better life. Somewhere out there, a father wears two different slippers and the daughter just wants to buy him shoes. The CPA title is not just a goal of one person. It's the collective voice of a student that enables him or her to keep striving. It is a collective dream of people whose lives could potentially change. And that is our purpose in NFJP. To be able to make these dreams a possibility. It's more than just a lecture that we conduct. It's a continuous fight for those who are marginalized. May mga national officers dito na parang hindi na natutulog. So allow me to say this. Bakit hindi ka natutulog can also be the new para kanino ka bumabangon. And whatever those ways may be in achieving NFJPS purpose, we are very hopeful that this goal starts a ripple and creates ripples of positive change. To end this, allow me to quote Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. When you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. I believe NFJP is one of the universe's way of conspiring to help accountancy students and their families achieve their dreams. With all those being said, I open this program. Welcome to all 1,500 of you. All right, thank you for that really heart
warming message, Kyle. Truly, that is not only the CPA title that we are all aspiring, but of course, for these dreams to become true, not just for ourselves, but for our parents. And we at NFJP uh, is really grateful to be instrumental on you achieving that success. So, all right. So let's get straight to business, right? And meet and and meet this very special person this afternoon, for which I heard is really admired by many and went on the headline different times last year. All right. So I'm not gonna spoil all the information as I call Miss Nicole Escol to introduce to us the speaker. Thank you, Daryl. So right, I know everyone is thrilled to meet our speaker who will be enlightening us this afternoon. It is an honor for me to introduce our esteemed speaker. So to start, she is an outstanding, dynamic, dedicated, hardworking, and passionate woman. During her college years in Bicol University, she was a consistent academic scholar. Hailed as the most outstanding JPA member of the year in 2013 and graduated as cum laude. In 2013, she took the CPA board exam and passed with an 87.86% mark. Years later, she pursued to become a lawyer and got her Juris Doctor degree in 2019 at University of Santo Tomas Legazpi and even graduated as the class valedictorian. In the same year, she took her shot in the 2019 Philippine Bar Examinations with a rating of 91.05%. She topped the boards and bested everyone. As one of the nation's most prominent CPA lawyer, she is currently working at Real Excellence Online CPA Review as an RFBT reviewer and helps in guiding the path of future CPAs in the country. Here to discuss Banking Laws and Anti-Money Laundering Act, please welcome Attorney May Diane M. Mazores, CPA. Good afternoon, Attorney. Yan, good afternoon. Yan, so grabe ang energy ko. Kasi syempre naman, alauna, oras di piligro, baka mo may nakitok na dyan. So ayan, good afternoon, JP Yans, and thank you for that introduction. Next, tama ba? Ano, di ata yung yeah, yes, yes, So anyway, thank you for that introduction. Ayan, okay. Thank you for that introduction, and welcome. To all JP Yans who are watching today on our Facebook Live. So, ayan. Thank you naman for allotting your time to listen to me as I discuss banking laws today. So, tomorrow, amla tayo. Okay. So, I was given the discretion by the JP, uh, NFJP, uh, to choose the topics I will discuss. And I chose these two kasi related siya, yung banking laws tsaka amla. So, gusto ko connected yung discussion. So, sisimulan natin sa banking laws. So, pwede akong mag-share screen ako. I can share screen. Okay. Prepare ako ng PowerPoint. So, mas madali. Alright. Okay. Okay na ba? Nakikita na ba? Okay na na. Mr. Daryl, okay na? Yes, that's right. Ayan, okay. Sige. So, bago tayo mag-start, natuwa lang ako sa, sa mga CP, accountancy students ngayon kasi despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, I was watching yung video presentation for your project Padayon. In Bicol, ang translation niyan is Padagos, uh, meaning to move forward. So I'm really glad that the accountancy students are not confined with the demands of online learning, but are, you are also lending a helping hand to your fellow accountancy students. So nakakatawa, nakakatawa. And yung mga sabi nga doon na very hardworking, very persistent, ang mga, ang mga accountancy students, and ayan, kahit, kahit ang hirap na nga ng physical classes and ang hirap ng accountancy itself, then patuloy pa rin kayong lumalaban. So, ayan, push lang. Ayan. Saludo naman ako sa inyo dyan. 
Kasi siguro kung estudyante ako ngayon, siguro babaliw na ako. Hala, ang hirap ng online class. Diba? As a teacher nga, nahihirapan ako. Lalo na pag nadi-disconnect ako, nagdadada ako, tapos wala na pala akong estudyante. <laughs> so, ang hirap rin yun. So, ayan. So, I salute you. I applaud you for, you know, choosing to continue fighting for your dream. And aganda rin nung speech nung nag-opening remarks. Yun nga. And sa, tama nga yun, That you are not only fighting for a title, you're fighting for a better future. So, ang ganda nun. So, kung decidido talaga kayo, kung talagang determined kayo maging CPA, makikinig kayo sa akin today, this afternoon, kasi kahit pa paano, walay natin. Di ba? May lalabas sa CPA board nyo na matutumbok ko sa RFDT. Okay? So, very limited lang. So, at least, meron tayong masishare sa inyo this afternoon. So, sana matulungan ko kayo. So, ayan. Banking loss tayo this afternoon. Okay? So, ayan. Siguro, most of you may nagkaroon na ng transaction with a bank or baka meron nga sa inyo na meron ng savings account, ganyan. Hindi lang GCash kasi ngayon ako sa uso sa mga bagets, mga GCash, ganyan. Pero, syempre, uh, majority of our financial transactions are still course through banks. Kasi andyan pa rin yung, andyan pa rin yung pera, perahan talaga natin. Although some are pushing na gawin na lang na virtual money. It's a long shot pa, kaya may introduction na ng Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, whatsoever. But uh, it's, I think it's a long way to go kasi syempre medyo skeptical pa ang mga tao dyan. But ayan, so andito pa rin. Banking loss pa rin tayo. Okay? So ang coverage ng ating discussion ay tatlo. Ito yung, ito, based, binase ko yung discussion ko sa... 2022 syllabus ng CPA board. So, ito yung nakita kong cover the banking loss. So, tatlo. Sabi ko, di at least banking loss ang i-discuss ko. Tatlo na ang matatamaan ko kaysa ano lang. Meron pa yan. Meron pang ibang banking loss like yung general banking law, yung monetary board act para sa Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. Pero ito lang yung nasa coverage niya. So, alam nga naman i-discuss ko sa inyo yung hindi nyo naman cover then Sayang lang ng panahon. So, ayan. Itong tatlo. PDIC law, secrecy of bank deposits, truth and lending act. So, simulan natin sa PDIC Law. Okay. Siguro nakita nyo na itong logo na to. Kung may, meron kayong ATM, pag nag-withdraw kayo, may nagpa-flash dyan na logo ng PDIC Law. Meaning, Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation. So, ito ang mga batas na nagko-cover sa function and coverage ng PDIC Law. So, unang-una yung RA3591, tapos ang dami niya ng amendment. Last yung 2016. Para lang alam nyo. Kung in case gusto nyo makita yung provisions mismo ng batas. Andiyan yan. Okay. Sige. So ano ba ang PDIC? Okay, natin. Corporation, PDIC. So it was created by 3591 to ensure the deposits of all banks which are entitled to the benefits of insurance. So andiyan na yung keyword nyo. Ah, okay. I-insure nyan. Kasi andiyan pa nga. Eh, deposit insurance. Okay. Para mas maintindihan pa. Nag-exist daw ang PDIC to provide deposit insurance coverage for the depositing public to help promote public confidence and stability in the economy. Siyempre, lahat ng dinideposit ng mga tao sa banko, it's their hard-earned money. Ayaw mo naman na dumating yung araw na yung pinagdepositohan mong banko, wala na, hindi mo na alam. Nagsara na, tapos hindi mo na alam, asa na yung pera ko po? Sabi niya, wala na, sarado na kami. So, kaya nag-exist yung PDIC para at least, pag nagsara yung banko, may tatakbuhan ka. Okay? So, in other words, deposit insurance is a measure implemented by the government to protect depositors from losses caused by banks. Because in the event that a bank is not able to pay its depositor, the deposit insurance will cover it up to a certain amount. The premium for this insurance is not paid by the depositors, but by the banks. Okay, ito yung usual na misnomer. Kasi di ba pag insurance ka, siguro pag CPAs na kayo, minsan usong-uso to sa CPAs eh, parang racket rin nila maging, maging insurance agent. So, pag kumuha ka ng life insurance, syempre, ikaw magbabayad ng sarili mong premium para insure yung buhay mo. So, dito, hindi ganun ang mangyayari. So, may deposit ka with banks, ang magbabayad ng premium yung banks. Okay? 
hindi ikaw, hindi galing sa deposit mo. Hindi walang ibabawas yung bangko para premium doon sa PDIC. Okay? May ibang functions pa ang PDIC, like yung sa liquidation ng banks, ganyan. Pero ang relevant lang sa atin is yung deposit insurance na part. Ano ba yung mga losses na kinocover ng PDIC? Ang covered lang niya yung losses that is brought about by the closure of a bank ordered by the monetary board. So ang monetary board, yan yung uh, isa sa mga governing body ng BSP Bank Central Pilipinas. And most of the time, it's because of insolvency. So wala nang pera yung bank. So, kung halimbawa, sino ba nanonood sa inyo ng money heist? Ay, money heist. Tama. Uh -huh. Yan. So halimbawa, may bank ko na ninakawan, naubos yung pera, di ba? Hindi yon hindi yon covered ng PDIC. So kung ang loss ay because of theft, closure, by reason of strike, fire, existence of public disorder, nagkaroon ng gyera, hindi yan covered ng PDIC. Okay? So kahit nakawan kayo, yan, mag, ano sila dyan, nung nabaw mangyari sa Pilipinas, yung ganun, huwag naman, yung parang sa money heights, yung bank na nakawan, hindi babayaran ng PDIC yung mga lost deposits. Okay? Ano bang mga banks ang covered ng PDIC? Yung BDO lang ba? BPI? Citibank? So the answer to that, lahat, all banks required, all banks are required or it is mandatory for them to insure their deposits with and pay premium to the PDIC. Kasi kung pipiliin lang yan ng batas, salimbawa, yung mga banko lang na malalaki, ganyan. Paano naman yung mga rural banks, di ba? Parang hindi naman magkakaroon ng confidence dun yung mga, yung mga depositor na, ay, itong rural bank, baka pag nagsaro, wala kumakuha kasi hindi covered ng PDIC. So, para pantay-pantay, para naman ma-assure yung mga depositors na kahit saan ka mag-deposit yung banko, makocover yan ng insurance coverage ng PDIC. So, mandatory yan. Okay? All banks. As of now, I think wala namang nag-register sa PDIC na i-cover nila yung deposits nila abroad. So, ang mga nag-comply lang with PDIC, yung mandatory talaga yung mga deposits na nasa Pilipinas. Okay? Although hindi naman prohibited na i-cover mo yung deposits abroad. Okay. So, ano ba ang PDIC's maximum deposit insurance coverage? Siguro alam nyo na to baka naririnig nyo or nakikita nyo nga sa mga ATM. So, previously, 250,000 siya per depositor with the bank. Pero noong 2009, inamend siya, dinobol siya, naging 500,000. Okay. So kung yayamanin ka na, and up to 500,000, relax ka lang. Up to 500,000, safe pa ang pera mo. Yeah. Parang inisip, sana nga umabot ng 500k after me. <laughs> Yan. So ito, ito naman, this is the technical term. Yung insured deposit. Doon para sa 500k. So ang meaning niyan, in case alamawa may multiple choice, what is an insured deposit? So ang an insured deposit is the amount due to any bona fide depositor. So highlight on the bona fide, meaning in good faith depositor or legitimate. For legitimate deposits in an insured bank as of the date of closure, closure but not to exceed 500,000. So yan ang threshold amount natin, 500k lang. Sino ba yung mga bona fide depositor? Paano ka ba makakonsider na legitimate depositor? Okay. Under the amended law, the PDIC law, no owner, holder of any passbook, ang passbook para yan sa mga current account, certificate of deposit or other evidence of deposit shall be recognized as a depositor entitled to the rights under the PDIC charter unless yung passbook daw na yon, yung certificate of deposit or other evidence of deposit determined ng issuing bank as authentic. So talagang pag pinakita mo yung passbook, talagang in-issue yan, in yan ng banko kung saan ka may savings. Dati kasi, bago ka makapag-claim, dapat nakaregister ka sa libro ng banko. So binago yun kasi masyado namang hassle, baka mamaya kasi hindi naman updated yung records ng banko tapos pagdating ng oras, manunubi ka. So ngayon, ano ba, meron kang passbook or other evidence of deposit, ayan, Pwede na yun, basta authentic document or record. Siguro for savings, yan, pwede na ang ATM. Kasi ang passbook naman, ini-issue lang yan sa mga current account. Okay? So, in determining itong insured deposits, halimbawa, 
may account ako sa Citibank. And madami akong, madami akong account. Kunwari lang madami akong pera, kunwari lang. So madami akong, madami akong bank account doon sa, doon sa bank kong yun. I-add out together yon yung deposit ko sa bank ko na yon that I am maintaining in the same right and capacity for my benefit either sa pangalan ko or in the name of others. So, ano yung sabihin mo? Pwede kasing, ito yung mga tinatawag natin trust account. Pwede kasing may pera ako pero pinangalan ko sa iba. Um, may tinatago ako, may tinatago akong pera, pinangalan ko sa iba. Pero sa akin talaga dapat yun. I mean, I'm the beneficial owner pero pinangalan ko sa trustee kong yun. So sa pag-determine daw ng amount na due sa depositor, pwede naman kasi yung ano lang, less than 500k, i-add ko daw lahat ng deposits in the bank that I'm maintaining in the same right for capacity. So para mas maintindihan nyo, uh, mamaya, next slide pala yung example. Another, another thing you should note is what if meron ang banko na two or more branches? Meron na main office and then branch office. Considered as one bank yun. Okay? Kung may deposit ka sa main branch, may deposit ka sa, halimbawa, Makati branch or Manila branch, i-add rin yun together, yung basta isang banko. And dapat hindi mag-exceed ng 500,000. Okay? So for example, si Mimiya, nag-own, may savings account siya with bank, rawr, 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 with a balance of 200,000. Okay? Meron akong 200,000 since kumita siya sa YouTube. So aside from the savings account, nag-open rin siya ng current account with bank. Bakit ba ganito ngayon example ko? Nahihirapan akong magbasa. So ayan sa bank. With a balance of 1 million. So yung current account niya, 1 million. Yung savings account niya, 200,000. So magkaiba sila ng type ng deposit. Savings at current. Pero same na bank. Same na bank. Kaso itong si Bank Rarararar, pinasara ng monetary board because of insolvency. So how much can Mimi Young recover from BDIC? Sige. Pwede kayong sumagot sa, ano, kasi hawa ko yung cellphone ko. Eh. Pwede kayong, ano, tingnan natin ang, ano. Ang sumagot ng tao ma, magkakajowa. Tingnan natin kung tama ang mga sagot mo. Dinosaur ka, girl. <laughs> Ayan. So, ano, wala pang sumasagot. Ano ba yan? Kaya walang mga jowa ang mga accountants si students, eh. Um, sorry. Hello. All right, guys. I think um, we are having some technical difficulty on the end of um, a thorny. So again, okay, let's just wait for her as she reconnect. All right. I guess it's good. Nag-exit na si Atorney. Ayan, guys, di ba? Umpisa pa lang talagang medyo fruitful at saka talagang dami na nating natututunan. And I really appreciate the fact na talagang sinisimplify ni Atorney yung mga discussion which kung alam naman natin, right, basta RFBT talagang technical talagang technical terms yung ginagamit at saka hindi ka, di mo siya maintindihan hanggang hindi ka gumagamit ng dictionary, right? Ayan, alam ko yan. Siyempre, basta talaga RFBT kailangan may dictionary ka. All right. So let's just wait for her as she reconnect on our Zoom, on our Zoom account, and of course for you to be able to see her as well at that Facebook. So just an update, right? So we are currently having one thousand seven hundred viewers on our Facebook Live. Ayan. Ayan. One thousand six hundred actually ngayon, pero kanina one thousand seven hundred to. All right. So ang dami nga, ang dami na talaga na nunoed. Alright. So guys, 
while waiting for her, let's just, let's just answer yung sinabi ni attorney kanina. Kung mala niya naman, di ba, magkatotoo yung sinabi niya na magkakajowa kayo kapag nagsagutan niya yun. Right? Alright. Ayan, let's just wait for her, guys. And of course, if you guys have clarifications or questions in your mind, just type it in. Kasi meron tayong committee na designated on the comment section on the comment section to um to raise that question to us um para kami ang magbabasa mismo kay attorney ayan ayan so we are still waiting for her maybe nagkaroon siguro ng technical difficulty and that's the very nature of course by using the, this virtual platform right talagang hindi natin maiiwasan yung mga technical difficulties na yan so again i believe attorney is here right now Ayan, nandito na siya, guys. Tanda-handa na ba yung mga sagot nyo? Ayan, ipakita nyo na yung mga sagot nyo. Alright, let's give the floor back to Attorney Azores. Ayan, Attorney, marami na atang sumagot sa question nyo kanina. Okay, Okay, So proceed naman tayo sa rules sa joint accounts. So ano ba yung mga joint accounts? Ito yung maintained ng two or more na persons. Pwede rin may kasama kang corporation o individual as corporation. Ganyan. So ang joint account pwede siyang end. Ibig sabihin, para maka-withdraw, kailangan ng pirman yung dalawa. Pag or, either. Okay. Pag end or, pwedeng pareho kayo or pwedeng either. Yan. Yan, ang, yan ang mga variations ng joint accounts. Okay. Ang joint account daw, may special rule siya. Insured siya separately from any individually owned deposit account. Okay. So separate ang, insur ang insurance ng joint account, separate rin pag individually owned. Okay. Ito naman, since ang joint account nga owned by two or more, so paano ang sharing? So pang sharing niyan, yung maximum insured deposit, halimbawa umabot ng 500k, Ide divide yan equally as there are account holders. Wala so, ba tatlong account holders divide yung 500,000 divided by 3. Unless nag-agree sila na 60-40 or may tatlo pala. Um 33 33 33 ganyan. Unless meron silang ibang sharing, pero general rule kung wala naman equal sharing. Okay. So ito yung sasabihin ko paano kung ang kasama mo sa joint account ay juridical person. Tapos ikaw natural person ka. Yung maximum insured deposit mapupunta lahat entirely sa juridical person or entity. So, halimbawa, president ka ng isang corporation, nag-open ng joint account ng corporation with you. So, ang maximum share deposit, wala ka makukuha doon. Lahat yan sa corporation. Okay. Yung aggregate interest daw ng each co-owner over several joint accounts, halimbawa, ang dami mong joint accounts. I I even though pareho ang partner mo or magkakaibang combination, Subject rin yun sa maximum insured deposit na 500k. Okay. So to make myself clear, let's give an example. Okay. So ito naman na mga fans ng gaya sa pelikula. So what if si Ian and Paolo Pangilinan, the couple, have the following account balances with Banco Inidoro? Okay. So si Ian may 500k, si Paolo may 100k, silang dalawa may 500k. Kasi nagsisave sila para sa future. So ilan ang insured amounts? How much? Nilayo ko na yung cellphone ko kasi hinaspat ko na for backup in case maglo ko ang wifi ko. Anyway. So lahat yan insured. Kasi nga diba, iba ibang capacity. Iba naman yung account ni Ian, iba rin yung account ni Paolo, and separate rin ang insurance for joint accounts. Okay. So, isa rin yung technique. Kung gusto mong pang ipa-insure, din nag-open ka ng joint account aside from, aside from your account with that bank. Okay? Alright. 
So, yun ang general rule lang natin. Diniscuss ko na because a joint account is insured separately from any individually owned deposit account. Okay? So, in case lang may lumabas na problem, pinakompute kayo, ganyan, sa RFBT or like may option na ganyan. So, yan. So, ilan daw ang pwedeng ma-recover ni Ian Pangilinan from PDIC? Comment down below. Yeah, ilan. Sige. Okay, sige, bigyan natin ng 10 seconds para magsagot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So, ang tawang sagot ay 750,000. Magdata kayo, ha, attorney, sabi mo, maximum account, 500,000. Hindi nga, kasi nga, ang joint account, separately insured from, in, from an individually account. Okay? And since dalawa sila dyan, so divided by two. Okay? Gets na siguro. May whiteboard ako dito sa background. Eh, kasi gagamitin ko ito sa rare review. So, para sa hindi na kong gets. So, yung kay Ian, kaya ba? Kay Ian and Paolo, na 500k ide divide sa dalawa kasi nga dalawa lang sila so 250k so itong joint account na to may sarili siyang insurance itong joint account na to so naka-recover siya ng 250k so take 250k silang dalawa yung individual account ni Paolo na 500k sa kanya yon kasi nakapangalan lang sa kanya so makikrecover niya lahat-lahat 500 lang si 50 sa Sige. Okay. Another example. Pero para sa mga blinks. So, alamawa ang bank record ng Bank Pink. Bank Pink. Show the following joint accounts and their balances. Okay. So, si Rose, madami siyang pera. Sabi niya sa mga, ano niya, sa mga sis. Yes, sis, parang gusto ko mag-open ng mga joint accounts. Kasi parang gusto ko naman, ano eh, share ko naman sa inyo yung blessings niya. And para ano, para kung wala ako dito, at least may pera tayo, ganyan. Pang shopping, pang shopping, ganyan. So, si Rose nag-open siya ng tatlong joint account with Lisa, Jisoo, and Jenny. Ayan, so, tig pa 500 rin. So, ang tanong natin, is each account insured? Okay, so, sagot na lang tayo, hindi ko na masistrikita ang sagot na. So, ang sagot dyan ay, of course, yes. Magkakaiba sila eh. Magkakaiba silang partners. Magkakaiba silang combination. Okay? Although, kala kasi ni Rose, syempre gusto niya utakan yung PDIC. Gusto niya kasi 1.5 ma-recover niya. So, ma-recover ba ni Rose lahat ng yan? So, how much can Rose recover from the PDIC? Sige. You can answer. What do you think? So, ang sagot pa rin ay 500,000. Okay. Kasi, yung aggregate interest ng each co-owner over several joint accounts, kahit owned by the same or different combination. So, uh, kahit sabihin natin na itong tatlo, ang lahat ng partner niya si Lisa, 500,000 pa rin yung marirecover niya. Kasi ang aggregate amount nga yung, yung kinoconsider. Okay. And subject pa rin siya sa maximum insured deposit na 500,000. Okay. I hope I made myself clear. Ngayon, magtatanong kayo, ah, okay, hanggang 500,000 lang pala yung covered. So, ano mangyayari dun sa difference? Alimbawa, yayamanin na ako. Meron na akong 1.5 million na account sa banko. Eh, hanggang 500,000 lang ba? Paano na yung 1 million? Wala na yun. Thank you na lang. Goodbye na lang. Ganyan. So, ang sagot dyan, hindi naman. Hindi naman like goodbye na lang. Kawawa ka naman kung talagang <laughs> goodbye na lang yung pera mo. Diba? So, yung balance dun sa uninsured portion, nabawa, example natin, 1.5 yung total na savings account mo, 500,000 lang yung na-recover mo sa PDIC, yung 1 million dun, pwede mo rin siyang i-claim against sa assets ng closed bank. So, pwede kasing, even though insolvent na yung bank ko, may mga properties pa rin niya, may mga lupa, ganyan, or buildings na ibebenta. So, yung claim mo, ipa-file mo dun sa liquidator ng bank ko para makonsider pag na-dissolve na or na-liquidate na lahat ng pera. Pag na-convert na yung to cash, at least andun ka. Mababayaran pa rin yung claim mo. Okay? So, yeah. So, paano naman? What is the mode of payment of the insured deposits? So, dalawa. It's either by cash 
or by making available to each depositor a transferred deposit in another insured bank in an amount equal to the insured deposit of such depositor. So in other words, pwedeng ibigay na sa'yo ng PDIC check na 500K or pwedeng halimbawa may yung nagsarang account mo ay nasa City Bank. Halimbawa, for example lang, nagsarang City Bank because of insolvency. Pwedeng ang gawin ng PDIC, yung 500K mo sa City Bank, transfer na lang doon sa bank account mo sa BDO, for example. Same lang naman. Parang bank transfer. Okay. So, regardless of the mode of payment, magkakaroon ka pa rin ng pera. Okay. Pera pa rin yan. Okay. So, kailan? Kailan ka ba dapat mag-file ng claim sa PDIC? Okay. Only within two years from the date of bank takeover. Okay, so otherwise, hindi na ma-honor yung right mo doon sa deposit mo doon. Sa PDIC. Pero pwede mo pa rin i-claim yun sa assets ng closed bank. Pero syempre, kung ikaw ang depositor, file ka sa PDIC kasi sure na yun na cash eh. Hanggang 500k, sure na yun na cash eh. Aantayin mo pa ba na doon ka na lang sa assets? Eh baka ang dami yung nakapila doon and konti na lang yung assets ng bank. Okay? So ito... May rule nga ng PDIC na pag not more than 100k naman daw ang deposit mo, hindi mo na kailangan mag-file ng claim sa PDIC. Papadalhan ka na lang ng cheque ng PDIC through the Philippine Postal Office. Kaso, dapat daw satisfied mo tong requirements na to. Unang-una, dapat wala kang obligation with the closed bank or hindi ka homemaker or hindi ka asawa ng borrowers. Kasi, for example, nag-apply ka ng car loan doon sa bank, may deposit ka nga na 100K, pero may car loan ka naman. So, hindi, hindi ka papadalahan ng PDIC ng less than 100K. Kahit sabihin natin na less than 100K yung deposit mo. And dapat daw meron kang complete address na updated and hindi sa name ng business entities yung account mo. And I, I forgot to mention pala sa start ng ating discussion. I think you also learned this in your credit transactions na ang deposit, kahit deposit ang tawag dyan, it's actually a loan. Pinapautang mo ang banko. Kaya nga may interest eh. Okay? Kahit, kahit tawagin mong deposit yan, ah, may deposit ako sa banko, it's actually a loan. Kaya binabayaran ka ng interest ng banko na sobrang katiting. Diba? Kahit sobrang katiting yan, as a matter of fact, pinapautang mo yung banko dyan. So, it's a loan to the bank. Okay? So, medyo misleading lang yung name kasi nga deposit. Pero it's not a deposit. You're not, you're, not, you're not actually putting your money in the bank for safekeeping. You're actually lending the bank money. So, pag more than 100K daw yung pera mo with, with the bank, kailangan mo mag-file Itong tinatawag nilang on-site claim settlement operations period. Parang ina-announce nila ito sa, sa, sa newspaper or pinopost nila sa conspicuous places na ako ito. Meron tayong claim settlement operations. Pumunta kayo dito sa amin and iti-check namin yung documents kung okay, babayaran namin kayo. So kung hindi ka nakapunta doon sa claim settlement operations nila, pwede ka naman pumunta sa office nila ulit. And then, or you may file a notarized claim and then send mo na lang by mail. What are the requirements in filing claims? So, syempre, andyan dapat yung original evidence of deposits. So, pwede yung passbook or certificate of deposit. You also have a valid ID with photo and signature. Birth certificate if minor and then valid ID ng parent. And then notarized SPA for claimants who are not the signatories in the bank records. Okay. okay. So, yun na. Yun ang ating PDIC law. Okay. Ang Q&A ba after everything na lang, no? Uh -uh. Yes, sir. Okay. Sige. Sige. So, okay na yan. So, PDIC. Yes, yun na yan. Uh, kung may questions kayo, reserve nyo mamaya. Sagutin natin yan. So, punta naman tayo sa mga secret. So, bank secrecy law. The main law dealing with bank secrecy is actually RA 1405. This law became effective in the year 1955. Sobrang tagal na. And throughout the world, nakita ko po somewhere in this article. 
only two countries have a bank secrecy act. Tayo, Pilipinas, and then Lebanon. That's why with a global trend towards financial transparency, various sectors, including the BSP itself, call for the lifting of the law. Because uh, the strict bank secrecy law in place are actually linked to the influx of illegal activities in the country, including yung money laundering, kaya sabi ko related tang banking plus sa money laundering, and was actually also considered as a major hindrance to the effective prosecution of criminals, especially those involved in allegations of corruption. Kung nanonood kayo ng news, siguro makikita nyo sa ibang news na, na pinabalita na itong, itong public official na to, um, parang may call sa kanya to sign a waiver or to disclose his, his or her bank accounts, ganyan, para ma-investigahan, ganito, ganyan. So malalaman niya kung bakit. Pero ano, siguro paano, paano na rin doon? Siguro kung public officer ka and talagang engaged ka in corruption, hindi mo naman ipapangalan sa name mo kung ano man ang tinago mo, di ba? So, yung mga ganyan, usually, binibigay sa dami ng account or pinapangalan sa iba. Well, anyway, that's just my, my assumption. So, bakit nga ba may bank secrecy, bank secrecy law in the first place? And sobrang tagal niya na, 1955, and tayo na lang yung isa sa mga titirang bansa sa mundo na merong ganito. And actually pinipressure na rin tayo ng international institutions uh, na i ano na nga scrap na yung law na yan kasi nga hindi na siya uh, responsive sa global practices. So our purpose talaga ng batas na to was to encourage people to deposit their money in banking institutions and to discourage private hoarding so that the same may be properly utilized by banks in authorized loans to assist in the economic development of the country. So ang point nito, pag may bank secrecy law daw, they at least magiging secure yung mga tao na private yung mga transactions nila, hindi malalaman ng buong mundo. Kasi when you look into someone's bank records or bank transaction records, you can actually create a picture of how they live. Tingnan mo yung tingnan mo yung bank records niya or yung statement niya, 'di ba? Ah, ganito pala yung pera niya sa ganito. Tapos ah, bumili siya sa Shopee. Tapos the next day Shopee na naman, ganito ganyan. Or may binili siyang ganito. It's it's actually a reflection of how you live and your lifestyle. So, sabi nila sige, para magtiwala yung mga tao sa banko, sige, wag na nating i-disclose. Para naman kahit anong gawin nila sa sa bank account nila, ganyan kung tala, kung halimbawa may um kilala ka, prominent kang tao, and then ang laman lang ng bank account mo ay 10 pesos, hindi naman siya rin ang kaya. So, yun yung pinaka-purpose ng bank secrecy law. Kaso nga, it evolved into something that uh, became like a shield for these criminals or for scrupulous individuals uh, in order to hamper investigation. So, naging ganun na siya. Kaya gusto nang i-scrap ng BSP and other sectors. Okay. So, ano-ano ba? yung mga bank accounts na covered ng bank secrecy law. So, all deposits of whatever nature with banks or banking institutions in the Philippines. So, in-interpret to ng Supreme Court na kasama daw yung mga trust accounts. So, di ba in-explain ko sa inyo yung trust, trust accounts kanina na pinangalan sa iba pero ikaw talaga yung beneficial owner. So, kasama daw dyan yung trust accounts. Including investments in bonds. So, ang investments in bonds, yung treasury bills, covered rin. Issued by the government of the Philippines, political subdivisions, and its instrumentalities are hereby considered as of an absolutely confidential nature and may not be examined, inquired, or looked into by any person, government, official, bureau, or office. Yeah. So very strong, no? Absolutely confidential. And may not be examined. Okay? So, lahat daw, lahat daw ng deposits of whatever nature, absolutely confidential. Okay. Although hindi yan, hindi yan strict na rule, kasi syempre, for every rule, there are exceptions. Hindi discuss natin mga maya. So, ang prohibited act ng batas na to is, it shall be unlawful for any official or employee of a banking institution. So ang inaano dito ay official or employee of a banking institution. So kung halimbawa, depositor ka, tapos nakasabay mo yung isang depositor, nasilip mo yung pasok, tapos may nang chismis mo, 
hindi ka naman, hindi ka naman covered ng bank sector sila. So, official or employee lang of a banking institution. To disclose to any person any information concerning bank deposits. Ano ibig sabihin itong any information? Halimbawa, uh, nangutang ka sa isang tao and then hindi mo na-disclose yung pangalan mo pero nabigay mo yung bank account number, ganyan. Kasi sabi mo, ano mo na lang, i-auto-debit mo sa bank ko. Kasi nakalimutan mo i-bigay yung full name mo. Parang alias lang yung nabigay mo. So yung seller, since hindi ka na ma ma mahanap, hindi ka na ma-reach out, pumunta ngayon sa bank ko. Sabi doon sa teller, tingnan mo nga tong ano na to, tingnan mo nga tong bank account number. Pakisabi nga kung anong pangalan niya. And yung number na rin, baka meron kasi medyo cute eh. So, hindi pwedeng sabihin ng bank teller yung kahit yung name lang. Hindi hindi ibig sabihin na pag pumasok sa inyo deposits, yung balance lang. Hindi any information sabi eh. Kahit pangalan na, yung cellphone number mo, yung address mo, hindi yan pwede i-disclose. Kasi any information. Okay? Hindi lang yung balance. Alright? So, like what I said earlier, the prohibition is not absolute. The rule allows several exceptions carved out by special laws and jurisprudence. Pag sinabi jurisprudence, yung mga cases that are resolved by the Supreme Court. Okay. These are the exceptions. Ito yung ginawa kong mnemonics. So, kung may pangalan na Pio dito, na Pio, guwapo ka ah. Yan. So, para, maintin, para maalala nyo agad, Pio, guwapo ka ah. So, yun yung exception. So, P, that's for written permission of the depositor. Okay. So, ito yung mga nakikita nyo sa news na uh, i-disclose mo na, mag-sign ka na ng waiver, ganyan. Kung wala ka talagang pinatago, ganyan. Kailangan written permission ng depositor. Kung gusto nyo, yung masilip ang isang bank account ang bank account ng isang tao. Pangalawa, impeachment. So kung may mag-file ng impeachment, yan, pwedeng ipa-disclose yung deposits. Okay. But but remember, itong RA1405, ang covered lang nito yung yung mga local currency deposits. Mamaya discuss natin yung foreign currency. Ito lang yung lo local currency deposits. Kung active kayo noon nung time ng impeachment ni Chief Justice Corona, ang issue doon yung foreign currency niya. Yung kaya nagkaroon ng issue. Kasi although impeachment, kaso foreign currency. So iba yon Ito impeachment, pero ang involved ay local currencies. Okay. Upon order of a competent court. So yun know, oh Kailangan may order of a competent court in cases of bribery or dereliction of duty of public officials. Okay. And the money deposited or investment invested is the subject matter of litigation. So, ano yung sabihin niya? Dapat daw, ang controversy dun sa case or ang pinag-uusapan, pinag-aawayan yung bank account itself. Okay. Ang example niyan, itong case na to, hindi ko ata yan nasa kamasa. Anyway. Parang ano nun eh, spouses melon ata, basta Basta gano'n yung ano nila, apelido. Meron silang, for example, meron silang account with UCPD. Tapos, may magpapadala dapat sa kanila ng 1,000 pesos. Kaso, nagkaroon ng glitch sa system. So, ang napadala sa kanila ay 1 million pesos. Okay ba? Ayan, sorry, nag-hang ako. Narinig ba ako, Daryl? Okay pa ba? Okay na. Yes, attorney. You're out of the way. Ah, yeah. Nag-ano kasi? Parang nag naghang yung isa niyo kasama kaya nag-react ba ako may ano. So, ayan. Ulitin ko, may magpapadala dapat sa kanila ng 1,000 kaso nagkaroon ng system glitch. Example lang, hindi ko malala yung exact bank. Nagkaroon ng system glitch si UCPB, for example, ang na-credit sa kanila, 1 million. So, di ba? Ang swerte. So, syempre, may difference na yun ng 999,000. So, syempre, naturally, babawiin niya ni UCPB. Kasi 1,000 lang, ako na-credit 1 million. 
Although may mga ganyan daw na cases na nangyari, even last year, may mga friend ako na na, na may na-credit sa kanila sa BPI. So anyway, yun. So, ang mangyayari, si UCTB, kinasuhan siyempre ito. The spouses melon. Siyempre, gusto namin bawiin yung ano eh. Gusto namin bawiin yung balance eh. Gusto namin bawiin eh. So, nagkaso ngayon. To recover. So, syempre, para patunayan na mali ngayon na credit, sabi ni UCTD, o tingnan nga natin yung bank account mo kasi dinidinay nila, hindi 1,000 na daw na credit, hindi, ganyan. Sige, tingnan nga natin yung ano nyo, tingnan nga natin yung, tingnan natin yung bank account mo. So, sabi ng court, yes, tama yan. Kailangan natin kailangan nating pwede nating mag-order na i-examine yung bank account niyo kasi ang subject matter mismo ng pag-aaway na to is yung savings account niyo na na-credit ng 1 million. Okay, so yun yung ibig sabihin that the money deposited or investment is the subject matter of litigation. Kasi ang pinag-aaway nga naman dito is yung recovery ng balance between 1,000 and 1 million. Okay? So yun yung ibig sabihin ng money deposited or investment is subject matter of litigation. So what if for example naman isa kang kwentita. Isa kang plantita. So ikaw to, si A, bumili ka ngayon kay B ng 100 na flower pots. So nagbayad ka ng 100K, dineposit mo sa bangko ni B. So syempre, kung mahal ng pots ng 100,000. So nagbayad ka ng flower pots ng 100,000. Itong si B, hindi nag-deliver. Hindi nag-deliver ng pots. Hindi sumunod sa usapan. So, kaso ka ngayon. Maybe, for specific performance, sabi mo, ay, ba't hindi mo dineliver yung flower pots ko? Ganyan, eh, ano, binayaran na kita? Ganyan, ganyan. So, para mapatunayan ko na talagang binayaran na kita, patingin ng ano mo, patingin ng bank account mo, tingnan natin yan, kung may 100,000 talagang pumasok. So sa tingin nyo ba, pwedeng mag-order ang court na buksan or i-inquire yung bank account ni letter B. Okay. So comment down below. So ang sagot dyan ay <laughs> ang sagot dyan ay no. Why? Kasi hindi naman ang controversy itong 100,000. Ang, ang gusto mong mangyari mag-perform si B, gusto mo, i-deliver ni B yung pots. Okay? Hindi naman, hindi naman, wala namang concern dito sa 100,000. Hindi naman to yung, ano, controversy. Hindi mo naman nire-recover. Ang, ang kinasa mo sa kanya, specific performance, eh, gusto mo lang ma-deliver yung mga pots. Okay? So, in that case, hindi mag-order ang court na buksan yung bank account ni para makita. Kasi it's not the subject matter of litigation. Dapat yung pera mismo, yung inimbestagahan. So tulad nung example natin kanina sa spouses melon, kung saan, yun talaga yung controversy. Yung difference ng 1,000 tsaka 1 million. Okay? Ayan yung PIO. P-I-O. So sana madali nyo ma-memorize. Ma Gusto nyo i-memorize. Pwede kasi mag-multiple choice. Which of the following are the exceptions to the ganyan? Except? So ito... Um, kapag dinarnish yung bank deposits mo, so ang ibig sabihin ng garnishment, meron kang bank account with a third party, which is in this case is a bank, tapos may nagkaso sa'yo for recovery of money or anything that requires um, for the payment of money, pwede mag-order ang court na i-garnish yung pera mo doon sa bank ko and ibayad doon sa nagkaso sa'yo. Yeah. Kaya incidental lang kasi even though hindi naman talaga ang main purpose is to know the balance pero kailangan kasi para malaman kung enough ba yun to satisfy the claim of the one that is suing you. Okay. Ito, incidental disclosure under the unclaimed balances law. So, kung halimbawa, sa parang yaman mo na, wala ka na paglagay ng pera and nakalimutan mo actually na may account ka sa isang bank o bawa sa BDO And for 10 years, hindi mo siya nagagala, walang saving, eh, walang deposits, walang withdrawals. Pwede yan kunin ng gobyerno kasi hindi nagagala. Kaya unclaimed balances lang. So for at least 10 years, hindi siya gumagalaw. Consider niya na yan ng batas na wala nang may-ari. So pwede yan i-claim. Okay. Ito naman, A for anti-graph 
and Corrupt Practices Act. So, kung ang, uh, ang pinaprosecute sa'yo ay unexplained wealth, so, pwede. Pwede mag-order na tingnan ang iyong bank account. Okay? And yung PDIC or BSP, pwede rin tingnan ang bank deposit if there is a finding of unsound or unsafe banking practice. Number eight, power ng ombudsman to examine and have access to bank accounts and records under the ombudsman law. Itong RA 6770, that's the ombudsman law. And dito sa ombudsman law, hindi lang yung public officer. Kasama dyan yung properties in the name of the spouse and unmarried ch children of the public official. So pwede yan i-take into consideration. Ito ang number nine. I hope you learned this in your taxation. May power ang Commissioner of Internal Revenue na mag-inquire sa bank deposits in case of the decedent for estate tax purposes or in case of tax compromise under Section F of the NIRC or upon request for tax information by a foreign tax authority. So yan yung power ng Commissioner to inquire into your deposits. Okay? May nakalaman na Dito pala sa number eight, itong power ng ombudsman, kailangan mo na may pending case. Okay? Hindi pwedeng, hindi pwedeng pinaghihiyan na lang ng ombudsman. Kailangan may pending case na before a competent court, before it can be inquired into. Ito naman, may discuss rin natin tomorrow, power na ang AMLC, Anti-Money Laundering Council. Okay? Expound natin yan bukas. And lastly, ito, fresh na fresh, a provision in the anti-terrorism law. So, kung na-designate kang terorista or napaghinalaan kang terorista, the AMLC, either upon its initiative or at the request of the Anti-Terrorism Council, pwede sila mag-inquire sa bank deposits mo. Okay? So, ayan, tingnan nyo ha, di ba? And related rin sa financing of terrorism. Ito sa letter C of any person or persons in relation to whom there is probable cause to believe that such persons or persons are committed. Ang problema lang dito ang nagde-determine ay yung anti-terrorism council. So, yung mga may balak dyan mag-law, I suggest na tumutok kayo sa oral arguments, di ba? Para ano, may matutunan kayong that's the best of the best, so magka-clash nila dyan. Sa February 2, I think. To determine the constitutionality of the anti-terrorism law. Okay? Sige, wait, water mo Okay. So yan na, tapos na tayo sa RA 1405. So like what I said, ang covered lang nun, yung mga local currency deposit, may special law para sa mga foreign currency deposits. So, ano ba, may US dollar account ka, ganyan. Yan, ito ang batas sa'yo. That's RA 6426. So the same with local currency deposit. All foreign currency deposits are of an absolutely confidential nature. Okay? And ang exception niya rin is upon written permission of the depositor. Okay? So same rin, in no instance na pwede siyang i-examine, i-inquire, or look into by any person, government official, bureau, or office, kahit judicial, administrative, or legislative, or any other entity, whether public or private. So, absolutely confidential rin ang foreign currency deposits. So, syempre, like what I said, for every rule, there are always exceptions. Di ba? Kahit, kahit yung mga sinasabi na kapag chinito, babae. That's the rule. But there are always exceptions. Or kapag nag start sa letter G, ang pangalan, manloloko yan. So, that's the rule. But there are always exceptions. Okay? So, ito naman ang exception sa confidentiality ng foreign currency deposits. So, ang mnemonics natin dyan ay WAP. Nag-WAP si AC. Alam nyo naman siguro yung kanta ng WAP. Hindi ko yung pwedeng i-ano sa inyo. I-demonstrate. So, alam nyo yan. So, nag-WAP si AC. Sino bang AC? Di mo may dancer na AC? Yung babae yung magandang sumaya. Or si AC na ano? Si AC na... Parang ano rin, vlogger ba yun si Ace? Basta nakikita ko siya sa Twitter, ang funny niya rin. So yan. So yan ang mnemonics niya para mabilis niyo yung mahalala. So nag-wap yung aircon, nag-wap yung aircon. Kung 
Wala kayo kilalang easy. So W is for written permission of depositor. So same, di ba? Written permission. Ito yung original nandun sa RA6426. Meron rin sa number 2 yung AMLC. So i-discuss natin tomorrow para hindi rin hindi rin masyado ma-preempt yung discussion. So ito, may authority rin ang AMLC to inquire into deposits involved in money laundering. And again, yung sa PDIC, if there is a funding, finding of unsound or unsafe banking practice. And again, mainit-init pa under the anti-terror law. Pwede rin kahit foreign currency deposits. And lastly, authority again ng commissioner to inquire for a state tax or in case of tax compromise. Ito. This is an exemption granted to foreign currency deposits. Okay? So foreign currency deposits are exempt from attachment, garnishment, or any other order or process of any court, legislative body, government agency, or any administrative body whatsoever. So it's so special. It's exempt from those processes. But you should distinguish this with the confidentiality clause. So, hindi ibig sabihin na exempt ka, exempt ka dun sa confidentiality clause, exempt ka na rin dun sa process. So, magkaiba yan. Exempt ka, sa con exempt ka dun sa confidentiality clause, exempt ka rin dun sa process. So, kung magkaiba yan. So, dalawa, dalawa sa foreign currency deposits, exempt na nga, or like absolutely confidential na, although, although may exemptions, Meron pang exemptions from process. So in other words, to simplify, foreign currency deposits are exempt from court order or administrative process. So kung gusto nyo i-secure ang pera nyo, i-translate nyo into foreign currency para safe siya. Kung may, yan ang usually problema rin. Eh. Kung, ano ba, kung may paparating na kaso or may pending na nakaso, yung mga matatalinong, yung mga matatalinong kinasuhan, kinoconvert nila yung mga bank accounts nila into foreign currency deposits kasi alam nila na exempt yan sa process. Untouchable. Okay? Okay, sige. Para mas maintindihan nyo, ito for example naman. Ito naman ang mga funds ng together. So for example, nagpautang ka kay Win kasi nagwapuhan ka. A fine national residing and working in the Philippines. Pautang ka ng 500k. When the loan fell due, hindi nagbayad si Win. However, you found out na, oh, meron palang peso account deposit si Win with China Oil Bank and then foreign currency deposit with North South Bank. Okay, sabi mo, oh, magbayad ka, meron ka palang bank accounts. However, despite demands, Win refused to pay kasi sabi niya, yung pera niya daw na natitira, allocated na yun para sa vacation niya in Bali with his boyfriend bride. So shocked. So pumunta ka sa court na yun, sabi mo, ayaw mo ha, you are unclean. You filed a case against Wynn for collection of sum of money and you won. Okay. In order to satisfy your claim against Wynn, nag-apply ka ng writ of garnishment. Di ba? Yung sabi ko nga, writ of garnishment, para yan sa mga pera or properties na nasa custody ng third party. So in the case of bank accounts, sa bank ko. Okay. So gusto mong i-garnish yung bank account para i-apply dun sa utang sa'yo. So, i-issue kaya ng court yung writ na yun. Okay. So, you can try to answer in the comment section para ano lang, practice. Okay. And the answer is, yes for the peso deposit account, but no for foreign currency deposits because they are exempt from garnishment. Mas special ang foreign currency kaysa sa ating sariling piso. So note that there are no similar or there is no similar exemption granted to local currency deposits. Ang reason niyan is to encourage foreign currency deposits in order to beef up or to increase our international reserves. Okay, so kailangan kasi natin yan. Kaya ini-encourage yung, sige mag-deposit mag kayo ng foreign currency para, para solid yung ating international reserves. So, syempre, again, there is always an exception to the rule. So, these are the exceptions to the exemption. This one is a pro hoc case or a meaning niyan for that instance only. 
case. So, may isang kaso, yung Salvation versus Central Bank, merong foreigner na nang rape ng minor tapos tumakas. So, syempre, nagmamakaawa yung pamilya na bigyan sila ng damages. So, in that case, kahit exempt naman talaga generally from garnishment ng foreign currency deposits, inalaw ng Supreme Court kasi wala talaga, wala ibang property yung pwedeng mapagkuhanan yung mga victims. So, kaya prohibition for that instance only. Another exception is yung civil forfeiture suit brought by AMLC to money laundering rent. So pwede rin i-forfeit yung kaperahan kung involved yun sa money laundering. And again, sa anti-terror law and sa AMLA, pwede rin i-freeze. So, sinabing freeze, hindi mo siya magagamit, hindi mo siya ma-withdraw. So ito yung exceptions to the exemption. Okay. So that's uh, bank secrecy law for you, All right? So now let's proceed to the last topic. Gusto niyo ng break? Pwede ba tayo mag-break? May ganun ba? Or like ano? Or we'll, be we will be having a break after this. Ah, after na. Uh, Sige. Ano na lang po? Um, okay po ba na? We'll have the icebreaker na lang ngayon? Oh, sige, sure. Sige, sige, okay. Sure, sige, para ano naman. Sige, sige. <laughs> Ready ba kayo, guys? <laughs> okay. I'll share my screen now for the icebreaker. Tambarin mo na kayo. Stop sharing. Yeah. Ano may hindi ba ako nasagot na tanong? Sorry, Darryl, hindi ko nakita yung, yung chat mo. Like the first ano, question ata video? yung... Ano? Like the first question at ayon attorney kanina. The first question with um, PDIC. Pero okay na. Nasagot ko? Oh. Um, hindi po nasabi yung sa exact na sagot kanina. Po. Alin yun? Okay, alin yun? Um, the first problem po na pre-present nyo. And the suggested okay. answer on the comment box is 500,000 po. Ah, yung sabi ko magkakadyawa? Apo, ah, yes. Oh yeah, seven hundred thousand. Tama yon, tama. Seven hundred thousand lang. Yeah. All right. Okay, All right, see. guys. All right. So let's have a quick break before we continue this very comprehensive discussion by, of course, by our very own top one herself, Miss um, or Attorney as that is. But of course, let's have some um, entertainment going, right? So let's have this icebreaker called Guess the Disney Movie. So it's very appropriate, especially if those sa mga Disney movie or Disney fans dyan. So it's time to test your knowledge, not just in accounting. Siyempre on the Disney movies as well. So let's start it. Ayan. So let's have the mechanics first, right? So this game will test the participants' knowledge on popular Disney movies. So don't worry. This will we will um be giving you popular Disney movies naman. So paunahan na lang. Just wait for our go signal. Siguro. Um but I think that's uh, actually written on the mechanics again. All right. So yan. Basahin natin. Disney la Disney landscape will be flashed on the screen. The participants shall guess what Disney movie the landscape belongs to. Second is that the participants shall supply answers pertaining only to the movie. And number three, wait for the go. Go signal of the host, that's me, in the comment section before you send your answers via Facebook Live comment sections. Only answers given after the go signal will be considered. So, I end. Unfortunately, we will not be able to like announce announce immediately the winners. But of course, for verification purposes, na rin, para naman fair tayo. Um, um, pra, um, winners will be examined first by the designated committee on the comment section, and we will just announce the winners after the discussion. All right. So I think we're through, right? So again, let's start it going and have the Disney movie. I remember to pala dito. All right. I think I already said that. All right. Again. So let's start it going. Are you ready, guys, for some Disney movie game? All right. So let's get it on for our first landscape. All right. So <laughs> I think we should go back, guys. All right. So as you can see, you can see um, some animals going into one direction. And there are 
birds or elephants, giraffe, I think that's zebra. So, yan. Go! Six, five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is the Lion King. Ayan, I could see na maraming sumagot ng tama. Talagang nagpapaunahan. And of course, may prizes kayo dyan, which we'll be give you later after this event. Alright, so let's move on for our second Disney movie. Ready? Go. Alright, as you can see, there are clouds over here. Some clouds over here with this wooden platform, I guess. So, ayan, just guess what do you think that is. So, go. Five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is Toy Story. All right, guys, the answer is Toy Story on the second um, Disney movie. So let's move further. Ready? Go. So, ayan, nakikita nyo. It's a little bit snowy on the mountains. Medyo may snowstorm ba ang tawag doon? I don't know. So, it's a little bit cold there. So, guess what that movie is. So, in let's get the countdown going. Go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is Monsters Incorporated. All right, so that's the answer. Monsters Incorporated, guys. So let's move on to our next Disney movie. Are you guys ready? Go. So as you can see, it's a little bit, um, is Asian country or is Asian culture? As you can see, I don't know. Maybe you know what that is. And it's on a village somewhere far. All right, let's get the countdown going in 10, 9, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the answer is Mulan. All right, so the answer is Mulan. They're Asian talaga. All right, I guess you guys are ready for our next Disney movie. So our next Disney movie is somewhere on the ocean with some really grown trees. Ayan. So I guess you know there's a house, actually tree house over there. All right. So let's get the countdown going. In go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And the answer will be Tarzan. All right. So Tarzan po ang sagot sa, sa, sa Disney movie na yon. All right. So let's move on. Ayan, di ba? Mabilis tayo mag-move on, guys. All right. Let's get ready on our next movie. Oh, there is a castle over there. And yeah, it's actually just above a lake. I don't know if it's a lake or an ocean, but it's above the water. But it is for sure a castle. So let's get the countdown going. Go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So the answer will be the little, little mermaid. All right. So that's the little mermaid, guys. All right. Let's move on for our next Disney movie. All right, so as you can see, it's a village. Um, it's a village, maybe it's a, it's a village in a rural, rural area, maybe. But as you can see, there is a carriage over there. All right, so guess what Disney movie is that? Go. And the answer will be? Beauty and the Beast. All right, guys, that's Beauty and the Beast. 
All right, let's move on to our next Disney movie. Oh, as you can see, there's a banner with Snuggly Duckling over there. There's a banner that welcomes to a certain area or a house beneath the giant tree. All right, so guess what movie is that, guys? So go, three, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, and the answer will be Tangled. All right, guys, that's Tangled. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to another one. All right, so as you can see, there's a frog over there. Is that, uh, yeah, I think that's a frog, right? Black frog diving into some sort of, maybe that's a swan or a lake. Of course, guess that, what movie is that, guys? All right, so let's give it a go in 10, nine, four, three, two, one. And the answer will be Bambi, 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 Bambi. The answer is Bambi, guys. All right, let's move on for another Disney movie. All right, are you guys ready? I am. So as you can see, there is an aurora over there. What a beautiful aurora just above the mountain. Guess what movie is that, guys? Let's give it a go. In 10, 9, 8, right. 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one, and the answer will be Brother Bear. That's Brother Bear. <laughs> all right, so guys, all right, guys, that's it. That's the conclusion of our icebreaker. If you think that you have won in this icebreaker, kindly check your messages. One of the committee members might send you a message for your prize. Oh, I am so just. Um, kapag naalam mo or feel mo naman na nalo ka, just wait for our messages kasi tinik down notes namin yan and we will announce later. So just um, just hold on and finish this lecture that we have given you. So yan, yan. Now sa'yo na maya ang inyong or sino ang mga nanalo. Alright guys, so I think that's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed for a quite some time and yan, I hope that it's enough to like um, divert our attention once again to a very fruitful discussion given to us by Miss um, Miss Azarias herself, Azores herself, I should say. All right, guys. So that's it for our icebreaker. So let me give the floor now to our very own Miss Maydayan Azores or Attorney Dayan Azores. Attorney, I think you're muted, Attorney. Uh, um, attorney, I think you're muted. <laughs> okay, so we are now on the last part of our discussion on banking laws. So, ayan, last na. So, an introduction lang, no? Para, para maganda yung pasok ng ating last topic. So, di ba, itong pandemic na to, it has inevitably drove more people into desperate financial situations. Even you, as students, are affected. With millions of people losing their livelihoods, di ba? Madaming nawala ng trabaho, nakikita nyo sa daan, yung iba na mamalimus na hunger and poverty on the rise, and prices of basic necessities reaching all-time high. Medyo na loka lang talaga ako nung namalengke ako nung isang araw. 400 pesos ang kilo ng baboy, my gosh. So ayan, nagulat ako kasi sobrang mahal. So because of that, because of those challenges, financial challenges that are brought about by this pandemic, there is also an unprecedented increase in debt. Yeah, madami nang ngutang. 
because people are left with no choice but to stomach exorbitant interest rates, rates charged by and more often that than not they found their, themselves in a confused situation and because they are made unaware that there are other fin finance charges may mga penalty charges pala on top of the amount borrowed and this leaves them incurring more debts than they can afford to pay okay so pagkatapos natin sa secret now we will discuss the truth in lending app Hindi ko nalagay yung truth in lending act. Basta that, that's the truth in lending act. Okay? So ano bang purpose nito? So the purpose of truth in lending act, di ba? Para based sa title pala, kanan sa pagpapautang. So the purpose of this law is to protect the public from lack of awareness of the true cost of credit by requiring from the creditor the disclosure of full information incident to a credit transaction. So basically, ang sinasabi niya, dapat pag magpapautang ka, dapat i-disclose mo lahat ng dapat bayaran ng debtor. Okay? So ang debtor, nangungutang, creditor, ang nagpapautang. Walang debti. <laughs> Kabaliktaran daw ng debtor, debti. May narinig akong ganyan eh. Okay. So ito yung disclosure requirement na binibigay sa batas. So like what I said, the creditors are required to furnish to each person to whom credit is extended prior to the consummation of the transaction. Okay, so bago, bago kayo mag-exchange ng pera, bago kayo magpermahan, dapat meron clear statement in writing that are in accordance with the rules and regulations prescribed by the board or yung monetary board, the following information. So unang-una, Yung cash price or delivered price of the property or service to be acquired. So kung magpapautang ka ng 100,000, dapat andon sa kontrata nyo or sa written agreement nyo na ang pinautang ay 100K. Unang-unang kailangan i-disclose. Pangalawa, so for example, bumili ka on installment ng isang bagay, tapos nagbigay ka ng down payment, kailangan nakalagay rin doon sa kontrata na ang down payment niya ay ganito. O kung may trade-in, di ba sa, ano, sa Power Mac, Pwede mong i-surrender yung ano, old iPhone para makabili ka ng bagong iPhone. So kailangan i-disclose nyo yun kung in case installment yung pambili mo ng bagong iPhone. And yung difference ng dalawa, one and two. And yung charges. Individually itemized. Kasi hindi lang interest ang charge minsan ng mga creditors, lalo na yung mga big finance companies. Minsan nandiyan yung penalty charges, yung mga... Documentation cost, iba-iba. Basta lang makabawi dun sa ano nila or mas mag-increase yung income nila. So kailangan ni itemize yun ng, ng creditor para naman aware yung debtor na ah, ito pala yung babayaran ko. And kaya required na prior an informed decision if I should proceed with the loan. Kasi baka mamaya, ang oh, 100,000 lang yung babayaran ko, pero yung charges ko, ba, sobrang laki. So, kailangan i-disclose ng creditor. Yan. The total amount to be financed, ilan bang utangin? Itong finance charge. Ang ibig sabihin ng finance charge, yung uh, uh, collection fees, credit investigation fees, attorney's fees, and other service charges. Okay? So, ang difference ng aggregate consideration on the part of the debtor, yung total niyang babayaran, plus yung cash price talaga yung binabayaran niya, yun yung finance charges. So kasama dyan yung interest. Actually, even without this law, kapag hindi nakasulat ang interest sa kahit anong utang, kapag kalimbawa oral lang, hindi siya in writing, you cannot claim that in any court. Okay? Kasi meron sa civil code, sa article 1956 of the civil code, no interest shall be due unless it is in writing. So kung halimbawa, nangutang kayo, tapos biglang nangutang kayo sa friend nyo, tapos biglang ano, nag-away kayo kasi nag, ano kayo, nag, nagkaroon kayo ng issue with the same guy, so hindi na kayo friends. So sinisingil ka na kayo ng interest, so, bayaran mo nung 5% interest per month yung pinangutang ko sa'yo. So hindi, yung kasi hindi in writing, hindi pwedeng oral lang. Okay? 
So aside from that, ito sinusuplement ng law na to, lahat pa daw ng finance charges kailangan naka-itemize doon sa kontrata niya. Okay? And the percentage that the finance bears to the total amount to be financed expressed as a simple annual rate on the outstanding and paid balance of the obligation. Para interest rate lang na ito yung percentage ng finance charges. So, sino-sino ba ang mga lenders na kailangan mag-disclose? So, first, syempre, andyan yung banks and other financial institutions. And then, included rin yung any person in the business of extending loans or selling or renting property or services on a time, credit, or installment basis, either as principal or as agent. So, itong requirement na to, hindi lang siya confined sa banks or financial institutions. Kasama dyan lahat na nagbibenta on installment. So, for example, punta ka sa Abenson, gusto mo rin ng air fryer. So, punta ka, pabili nga pa ng air fryer. Tapos, wala ka palang cash. Well, lumapit ngayon yung agent ng home credit. So, since installment yan, yung seller, si Abenson, kailangan niya, i-disclose. And si home credit, doon sa pagbili ng air fryer. Kasi imposible naman ano lang yan. Imposible yung hindi ka charge ng interest, hindi ka charge ng finance charges, so dapat naka-enumerate. Hindi ka pwedeng gulatin na pagdating ng billing statement mo, biglang may dagdag. Kasi hindi ka naman previously informed. Okay? So ano naman yung effect pag hindi nakapag-disclose si creditor? Na, hindi naman porket hindi na-disclose yung halimbawa finance charges or may collection fees pala, valid pa rin at enforceable yung credit transaction. May utang ka pa rin. Hindi ibig sabihin na hindi na-disclose o oh, wala lang utang ha, hindi paid na yan kasi truth in lending o oh, hindi mo na-disclose. Hindi yun. So valid and enforceable pa rin. However, the debt So, pwede kang mag-file ng civil case for recovery of damages in the amount of 100 or twice the financial charge required by the creditor whichever is greater but not to exceed 2,000. So, pwede kang mag-file for damages. However, this must be brought within one year from the date of the occurrence of the violation in any court of competent jurisdiction. Kapag willful yung non-disclosure, pwede kang mag-file ngayon ng criminal case. Pwede yung patawa ng fine not less than 1K or more than 5,000 and pwede pang makulong for not less than 6 months but not more than one year. Or pwede rin both, pahing kulong. And it's a very important rin na effect, walang karapatan ang lender na i-collect yung charges or increases na hindi stipulated sa promissory note or doon sa credit documents niya. Okay. So pwede kang mag-deny, pwede mong sabihin na eh wala naman yan, hindi yan included so I will not pay yan. Okay. Just make sure na hindi talaga na-disclose. So, actually malapit na pala ako mag-out. So, these are the examples of violations of Truth and Lending Act. So, in a case, pinapirma yung mag-asawa, spouse si Lon, uh, to sign credit documents and promissory notes na blank. And then, unilaterally, si PNB na lang yung nag-fill out ng details. So, bawal yun. Violation yun ng Truth and Lending Act. So, parang exploitation naman yun ng mga credit, ng mga debt. promissory note which grants the creditor the power to unilaterally fix the interest rate. So, it means that the promissory note does not contain a clear statement in writing of the finance charge. So, di ba? Didinis close. So, violation siya ng Tutin Lending Act. Okay. So, aside from that, syempre, since unilateral, talang natawa mag-determine ng terms and conditions because we have the principle of mutuality of contracts. So, dapat nag-agree tayo. Hindi pwede ikaw lang mag-agree. Or ikaw lang mag-set. Okay? Ayan. So, ito na. Last, ano pa na siguro ito? Oh, last slide na. Okay. So, we have a problem here. Ano lang? Example. And you can also comment down below the answers. Tingnan mo lang siguro ano. No, itong si Daryl. Kung may sasagot ba. Ayan. Para sa mga fans ng BTS. Okay. So, Jungkook went to Dynamite Bank and applied for a loan. Ayan. Namo problema siya. So, kailangan mo siyang tulungan. The bank manager made him simultaneously sign credit documents and a promissory note. On the disclosure statement included in the credit documents, 
there was no mention of penalty charges. Pero sa promissory note, the penalty charges were detailed. Okay. Wala sa credit documents, pero nasa promissory note. So on the first month that the loan was due, Jungkook failed to pay on time. Siya nakabayad. So si BTS, Dynamite Bank sent him a statement of account for the total amount due, which includes the interest and yung penalty charges. Okay, so, kung balikan nyo yung penalty charges, hindi daw naka-disclose sa credit documents, pero nasa promissory mo. So, sabi yung Jungko, ah, hindi ako, hindi ako babayaran yan. Hindi ba marunong magtagalog. Hindi ko babayaran yung penalty charges because it's not included documents. And uh, I, Jungko said that he is not liable there too kasi nga hindi kasama dun sa disclosure statement. So is Jungkook correct? So without the bias of being a BTS fan, is Jungkook correct? You may now answer the comment section. Okay, say again. Okay. All right. So... Ayan. Um, okay. Their answer to Tony are actually yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if it's an objective, okay. but I don't know. Okay, idol nyo, yes ng yes. <laughs> Yun ba? Yes lahat sila. Okay, ha. Pero kung hindi si Junko ang example ko dyan, ano kayo? No. Okay. Ayan. Lahat yes. There are, there are no answers naman actually, Tony. Mga lima sila. <laughs> so, ang tamang sagot ay no. It's actually an, it's an actual case. So no, because the reference to the penalty charges in the promissory note constitu constitutes substantial compliance with the disclosure requirement of the truth in lending act. Kasi di ba ang purpose lang naman ng, ng disclosure is to inform the debtor. So it was sufficiently complied when it was detailed in the promissory note. So mali naman doon si Jungko. Okay, so yeah. So that's banking loss for you. So if you have any questions, I will entertain them now. And yeah, thank you so much. All right. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, those in between. That's what you call a very brief but very substantial discussion of banking loss. And which is very crucial, especially to us as CPA aspirants, right? But guess what? That may be the end for today. But there is more. There's so much more tomorrow. And we will be joined, of course, by top one herself, Attorney May Dayan Azores. And of course, by the legend, Sir Rex Bangawan tomorrow. So we will be and uh, we will be seeing you again tomorrow, of course. Ayan. But of course, let's entertain some questions over here, right? So para naman ma ma ano natin yung mga clarifications nyo dyan. Baka hindi kayo makatulog eh. So let's seize the moment habang kasama pa natin si attorney, right? So first question, attorney. Law, part of banking loss. If yes, will you, ag will, you ag will you agree if this will be removed as law since most people do hide their accounts so that authorities will not be able to investigate them from doing bad acts? I agree with the lifting of the law, especially that international finance organization themselves are forcing or pressuring the Philippines to lift the law to be in line now with global practices. I mean, if other countries are already very transparent with their financial transactions, then why don't we do it as well? And I think it will also protect lend, uh, depositors from fraudulent transactions kasi mas magkakaroon ng power ang BSP to monitor to monitor real time rin kung meron talaga mga kaduda-duda na mga transaction but um, we can always um, put some safeguards in order to maintain to maintain confidentiality of some transactions lang pero kung ganun na sobrang hirap na hindi talaga makikita yung bank accounts especially sa prosecution ng allegations of corruption then in that case or in that manner pala nang I agree with the lifting of the law all right, so there you are, guys. So for your second question, attorney, my order of priority po ba kung sino ang babayaran ng bank pag naging insolvent? Yun po bang mas malaki yung deposit sa bank yun? 
po ba mas ma- mauunang babayaran? I re- I'll repeat, I'll just repeat, attorney, sorry. May order of priority po ba kung sino ang babayaran ng bank pag naging insolvent? Yun po bang mas malaki yung deposit sa bank? Yun po ba ang mas mauunang babayaran? Yung mas maganda. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I think covered to ng ano nyo eh, syllabus. So, although hindi ko naman siya didiscuss. Pero ayan, pag nag-enroll kasi kayo sa Rayo, didiscuss ko. Yung FRIA, Financial Rehabilitation Insolvency Act, doon naka-specify yung order or kung sino yung mga priority. Pero as, a, ano no, as an introduction, pag mga ganyan na uh, uh, insolvent ang isang company or ang bank, ang priority dyan always is yung mga empleyado. Empleyado, and then after that, uunahin yung mga secured na loan ng banko. Ano yung sabihin ng secured na loan? Yung may mga mortgage, ganyan, yun ang una. And then saka na yung unsecured. Hindi naman palakihan. Hindi naman palakihan na mga. Depende actually sa kind. Kind ng claim. Alright. Thank you, attorney. Another question, attorney. For clarification lang po. So it means po that the PDIC can only give 500,000 as maximum then the remaining balance will be paid by the closed bank. Yes. Yeah. By the liquidator of the closed bank. Yeah. Alright. So, ayan. Ano siga? Meron pang about ano dito eh. Kasi po mostly are like questions about career and everything. So we are really excited as well. <laughs> we are really excited as well to know more about this. So another question po. Yun po bang minimum sa ATM, ATM machine na bills which is 100 yata is batas or like policy lang po ng bank? Policy lang I think. Hindi naman. Wala naman akong alam na batas na hanggang 100k. I think sa ibang bank ko nga 50k lang eh. Ano rin siguro to prevent Uh, unauthorized, unauthorized transactions in case na halimbawa ang nag-withdraw eh, nakapulot lang ng ATM tapos medyo, medyo uh, hindi careful yung depositor nilagay niya yung pin niya dun sa ATM so para rin ma-prevent na maubos or malimas yung pera I think that's the rationale behind it Alright, that's right Thank you po Ayan, mag-proceed na po tayo sa mga career-related questions Which actually, I'm really excited to know more about it naman. So ano pong masasabi nyo at may papayo nyo sa mga nagbabalak mag-jurist? Mag? Mag-jurist po. Jurist? Law, law school at Ah! <laughs> Akala ko, ah, sa review, go! <laughs> okay, <laughs> jurist review. Uh, of course, since I came from there and I can attest to the effectivity rin of the method, Then, if it works for you and you're comfortable with it, then you go with the review center. And so, tingin ko naman, um, lahat naman ng review centers available are very competent. And almost lahat naman sila pare-pareho ang reviewers. So, you have to find a review center that suits, with, that suits your needs, that, that uh, is comfortable for you. And accessible rent or affordable para sa iyo. So baka hindi mo afford yung jurist, so hindi mo naman pwedeng pilitin. Pero syempre, as a, an alumna of jurist, I will very much recommend it. Uh, Alright, so again, moving on po. On another question, um, generally na lang po, what, um, ano pong masasabi nyo or your advice is to those students or those um, accountancy students that would aspire to be CPA lawyer as well someday? Yeah. I have always said this is kahit sa mga ano ko sa mga estudyante ko sa undergrad. I'm telling them that once you become CPAs and especially with the very broad and comprehensive coverage of your CPA board exams. Pagdating niyo sa bar, parang feeling ko maning-maning niyo na lang eh because uh, yung coverage ng RFBT niyo, it's actually more expansive sa coverage ng commercial ng bar. So, as a CPA, may edge na kayo kasi alam nyo na yung tax. Tapos pagdating pa sa commercial law, nadaanan nyo na rin almost lahat. So mag-focus na lang kayo sa ibang subjects na di nyo nadaanan. Kahit nga sa RFBT, meron kayong labor law. Eh. So pasok pa dyan. So, so kung gusto nyo talaga mag-lawyer and that's for your professional growth and development. So I will encourage it. Of course. And as a CPA, you already have an edge and Some subjects will be like review classes for you. Ayan. 
So, may mga kilala kasi ako na CPAs na naglo kasi na bored lang. <laughs> so, kung ganun rin kayo, baka mamaya pagdating yung oh, nabored na ako sa ano, gawa ng CPA. Mag-ano naman ako, mag-explore naman ako ng ibang area. So, pwede rin yun. And yung iba rin for promotion. Ganun. So, kung pangarap niyo talaga, then push. Mahirap nga lang, but you know, you already have the training sa CIS Accountancy. You already have the study techniques. You already have the discipline. You already know how to study properly. And you already underwent a licensure examinations. So, ano na yun? Parang preparation na lang yun for bar exam. All right. Thank you, attorney, for that. Ayan po, may pahabol po sila dito about PDIC law po. Um, pwede daw po bang ma-recover ng government ang funds na hindi na-cover ng 500,000 na insurance? What do you mean? Mag-recover ng government? Like, ano, may example po siya dito. Example po sa GOCC, nag-exceed po ng approximately 90,000 sa 500,000 na insurance. Mare-recover po ba yon since government to government naman po? Uh, like what I said, pag in excess na 500k, yung claim mo, i-claim mo na lang sa liquidator ng bank. Okay? Kasi ang PDIC, upon paying the 500k, okay na siya eh. And yung PDIC naman, sisingilin back yon sa banko. Okay? Kung ano yung, yung mga nabayad nyo. Okay? So, depositor ka, hindi nabayaran ang buho ng PDIC, file ka ngayon ng claim sa liquidator ng bank. Kasi yun nga, may mga assets siya. So, i-liquidate yun, ibibenta, dun ka na lang ulit mag-file ng claim. Alright, sige. Siguro po, last two questions na lang po, attorney. Alright. So, ano po, um, any tips daw po on making it easier to familiarize or even memorize these laws? Like, um, siguro po, let's take it in the perspective or in the view of RFBP na lang in general and how to like study better RFBP. So like what I what I did with our discussion today, you can use mnemonics. Yeah. You can use mnemonics in case there are enumerations, and you apply the laws in your daily lives. Because lahat naman yun na encounter natin. So ano ba sa RFBT yung law on sales? Every time bumibili ka sa Shopee or sa Lazada, you're entering into a contract of sale. So pag mega non, isipin mo na rin, ah, ito kasi yung ganito ganyan. Yung mga yung mga concepts na natutunan ko sa sales, ganito pala, ganyan. Or when you read the news, ma-apply nyo. So, ang mga batas naman kasi mahirap talaga siyang intindihin kapag inano mo lang, confine mo dun sa sections nyo. But if you imagine it, or if you apply it in in your daily lives, or kahit mag-imagine ka lang ng scenario in order to understand the law better, it will work for you. Kasi kung ano lang, memorize ka lang, tapos hindi mo naman alam, para saan ba itong memorize ko? Ano ba ang kahalagahan nito? Okay. Hindi mo talaga maintindihan. Kasi lahat naman ng batas na yan, they exist for a purpose. Okay. Kaya meron na, ano yan eh, meron agad na policy. Pag nagbasa kayo ng long, sa simula niyan, nakalagay yung policy or para saan ba, ano ba yung purpose niya. So, ganun. Yun na lang. Uh, imagine nyo and apply it to different scenarios or in your daily lives para mas ma-appreciate nyo and mas matandaan nyo. And in order to memorize enumerations, yun, gamitin nyo yung mga mnemonics na mabilis rin matandaan. Maka kasi yung mnemonics yun nakalimutan. So kung halimbawa doon sa ginawa natin, di ba, mabilis na, Pio, guwapo ka. Yung mga ganyan. So tatatak sa isip nyo. Okay. And I think naman yung mga nagre-retain talaga sa memory, yung meron ka na-associate mo sa mga bagay na daily mong na-encounter. So yun, yun na lang siguro yung tips. And... Um, wag lang kayo siguro ma-overwhelm talaga. Wag lang na ano, parang pag magbubukas pa lang kayo ng libro. Oh, ang hirap. So dapat ang mindset nyo, pag ano nya lang, you are open, you are willing to learn and decide na kayo mag -aaral. And aside from that, syempre consider the external factors like you are studying on the time that you are most productive. May mga tao kasi mas nakaaral talaga sila pag ano, alba madaling araw. Meron rin mas nakaaral ng gabi. So I-determine nyo rin, kailan ba ako best nakaaral? And ano ba yung learning style ko? Mas naintindihan ko ba pag naririnig ko? Or mas naintindihan ko ba pag nagdo-drawing ko? Nagdo-drawing ako or I'm a combination of both? So yun, i-discover nyo rin. Make it a process and enjoy learning rin. 
it's a key also na na-enjoy niyo yung binabasa niya. All right. So I would like to take this opportunity as well to congratulate you, po, attorney, for of course recently topping the um, bar examination and the whole JP uh, from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao is really proud of you, po. Ayan. <laughs> Ayan. Siguro nagwonder narin lang po kami. What what's the what's the first thing that pops in your mind, po, when you like heard the news that you're the bar topper? <laughs> <laughs> disbelief, talaga. I'm in disbelief. I initially thought that the picture I was seeing was the list of the passers. Kasi my surname is starts with letter A. So I thought initially na alphabetical. Eh kaso na-realize ko, Azores, yung friend ko, eh ang mga pinidin na napuyan ganyan, so hindi sila nakapasa. Ganyan. So tinignan ko yung heading. Yung talaga nakakatawa. Nakita ko na yung pangalan ko before I I saw the heading. Ah, okay. List of top matchers. So yeah. Then I cried and cried and cried. All right. So once again, congratulations, attorney, for that success. And of course, we're really grateful that you impart such significant knowledge on our JPNs. Imagine 1,700 viewers wow. kanina tayo sa Facebook. So we are really grateful. Thank and we so are. Much. And I don't right. take this to like to take this opportunity to, of course, thank and JPA for inviting me. It's really fun to connect with accountancy students, even though virtually. Mas maganda sana kung ano to, no? physical na event, mas masaya. But anyway, uh, yun nga, I understand the difficulties of online learning. So I want to help students as much as, fa- as, much as possible, uh, CPA students and law students alike, in order for them to cope up with the demands of online learning. So ayan, and hopefully, ayan, mag-promote na rin ako. Hopefully, I see you, all of you, Uh, in our review, so meron tayong Rayo Professional for those who will take the board exams already. And we also have the Rayo Undergrad Review, which I will be part of. So ako yung RFBT reviewers. So kung hindi pa naman kayo magtitake ng CPA board and you want to enrich or enhance your knowledge in any of the subjects or all of the subjects and you want to prepare early, you can avail Rayo Undergrad my whiteboard here. So, yan ang gagawin natin. Something from me. All right. Once again, thank you, attorney. We're really grateful. All right. So this recorded video here on the Facebook page of NFJPA will be deleted after this live streaming. But don't worry. It will be re-uploaded on the Real Excellence Online's YouTube account or the Rayo YouTube account with the link below. So you could always rewatch it there. So don't worry, guys. You could always rewatch it and review it at their official YouTube's channel. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This finally concludes the first day of Kina Adman, a two-day lecture series that tackles, of course, banking laws, um, AMLA, and taxation under So um, that this, as I said a while back, this is not the end. We will still see you tomorrow for a more fruitful learning experience. But of course, we part before we part for this for today's event. Let's have some reminders. So to claim your prize, kindly contact this person via messenger. So our Kimberly Riel is our national vice president for finance, and of course, provided is her official Facebook link, all right? You could always message her or icebreaker winners, kindly check your messages. One of the committee members will send you a message for your prize. So meron kasing instances na hindi nagbe-message yung mga winners natin. And that's why we would like, um, pero the first um, option is that we are messaging actually those winners. Pero on those instances na hindi hindi namin kayo mag-message pwedeng pwedeng kayo na lang yung mag-message sa amin so before we end right so let's have or let's announce the winners for our icebreaker so for number one, ayan nakikinig pa ba kayo number one, we have Rachel Davak all right congratulations Rachel number two, we have Kimberly Batakam Dolo Sorry guys, if I mispronounce your 
names. Number three, we have Catherine Bautista. Number four, we have Patricia Melendres. Number five, we have Shaira Abigail Mercado. Number six, we have Carlia Sedano. Number seven, we have Mika Skyle. And number eight, we have Kristen Joy Galapon Paragas. I repeat, ah, we have Rachel Davak, Kimberly Batacomdolo, Catherine Bautista, Patricia Melendres, Shaira Abigail Mercado, Carlia Sedano, Mika Skyle, and last but not least, we have Kristen Joy Galapon Paragas. So we repeat. Kindly check your messages. One of our committee members will send you a message for your prize. So for some other reminders. All right, so this is for evaluation purposes for the banking loss or for today's event. So please do evaluate our event for us to know where or what where exactly to improve on. So only those who filled out the evaluation form will be given the certificate of participation. So that serves two purposes. First is for your certificate of participation. And second is for us to for you for us to know where to improve and what to improve, right? So again, we would like to further reiterate to please like the Rayo or Real Excellence Online CPA Review Facebook page and join the Rayo Accountancy Group for exclusive webinars from the from the review center itself. So provided are the link for those for the page and the group. Another reminder. So we are days away from the 13th knockdown, the PICPA National Accounting Quiz Showdown. So we are really excited on this, guys. So it is a momentous clash of wits and skills in academic excellence that is about to begin. As the unraveling continues, NFJP presents you the 13th edition of the National Accounting Quiz Showdown. Out of all the JPNs across the country that will be held on February 13, 2021. Raise the banner of your local chapter as the most profound tributes from 13 different items. For more information, download the packet form. And guys, this is what this is actually one of the major events worth it to look forward. Because lahat ng local chapters, lahat ng participants maglalaban laban to see who's the best of them all to be declared as the champion of the 13th knockdown. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, and of course those in between. That finally concludes the day one of our Kinadman, our lecture on banking laws. AMLA taxation under the local government code. So there, once again, we would like to um, greet you a good afternoon. And of course, thank you for participating on this learning experience. May we request, of course, a very special speaker, attorney, to join us on our photo op. Ayan, yung mga kasama natin dito sa Zoom, please turn your cameras. Para naman makita natin yung mga pretty faces niyo at handsome faces. Ayan, Raven. Dito ba si Raven? <laughs> Paano muna ng share screen para makita yung lahat? Sure. Ayan, thank you. Ito na. <laughs> Ready na kayo, guys? Ayan, sige. Mag-count ako, ha? OMG, yung chicken sweet lang. Ayoko na mag-count. <laughs> sige, okay. One, two, three. Ayan, Marvin. One, two, three. Smile. Wait, again. Sige. One, two, three. Smile. Ulet, ulet. <gasps> Wait, wait, wait lang. 
Ayan. Oh, OMG. Wait lang. Hindi ko na alam ano nangyayari. Ayan. Okay, guys. One, two, three. Smile. Sige, wacky. One, two, three. Yay. Done na, guys. All right. So, let's have the paragon. from faraway places find themselves in a common ground across the distance a variety of phases on a single and burning passion abound. we believe there's no greater pride than the work and the name we make we believe there's no greater glory in the honors to goodness path that we take different tongues singing one song as we try to make ourselves paragons of our ideals to be at pace with the world learning the ways to conquer and win every race and we try to make ourselves arrogance of honor and our success is Jamie's success breaking walls and building bridges Endeavor to keep our ties. If someone falls. 